And it's junk bin time again, and yes, you guessed it, it's another monitor, another non-working one. I found this one uh, inside a box for a new monitor. I saw the empty box there and I thought, ah, oh, I wonder if there's anything in it. Sure enough, there's the old monitor they were replacing. In this uh, instance, it's an LG, life's good, yeah, they changed it. <laughs> and it's a Flatron W1942T, 19 inch, it's widescreen, so you know, it's, it's not that great, but it's certainly worth salvaging. And I have tried to power it up and uh, it gave a, an image briefly for a couple of seconds and then it's just kaput. So what do you bet? It's the caps. Let's crack it open. And it's another one of these pain in the ass clip ones. Really don't like them. Much prefer the uh, good old fashioned screw. But what can you do? I wonder who actually makes these design decisions to go. They're going to uh, make this case clip instead of screw. I mean, I know you do save a couple of cents, but geez, you know, really tight asses. We're in like Flynn. Woohoo! There we go. Hey, there we go. This one's a bit different. Construction of the other one. The uh, flat panel comes out of the top and the boards are on the bottom. So let's disconnect the ribbon here. We've got our backlight over here. And this LG monitor's pretty darn ordinary compared to the Samsung one we looked at last time. It's not a full metal shield uh, chassis at all. It just sits in this little metal frame here, which is, you know, okay in its own right. Um, but it's certainly nowhere near the quality of the uh, Samsung monitor we saw last time in terms of physical uh, build construction. And the board doesn't look nearly as good a quality. And once again, of course, they've got a single-sided PCB, par for the course here. But and look at these diodes here, just pushed in dodgily at any old bloody angle. Horrible, horrible. They've got a little kink in them uh, to stop them going all the way through. I mean, they've done that. They've mounted them off like that to uh, uh, give them uh, spacing and some heat sinking with the extra leads and to get them off the board. And you can actually see on there, you can actually see a heat sink symbol. So it's almost as if, well, they were supposed to mount these on heat sinks and you see the footprint in there for like a uh, vertical TO220 package device and they've gone, oh, bugger that. We won't uh, use an expensive TO220 package diode and a heat sink. Cost a fortune. We'll save some cents and we'll just whack in these ones here and just leave them freestanding off the board. Oh, poor form, really. Ugh, just terrible. And uh, yeah, they're just pushed in there at any old angle in the factory, not in China, in this case, in Indonesia. Up the top here is an M205 size, uh, direct soldered in fuse like that. Don't particularly like that, but hey, at least it is fused, right? And, uh, and they've got, you know, basic adequate protection and um, some filtering here. But yeah, they haven't really gone to town on the input side of stuff. They've got uh, uh, shake-proof washers on the earth lug down in there. So it, it's okay, you know, it's, it's not too bad. I guess it's passable. I guess you could say. And uh, what we're really interested in, though, are these caps. Hmm. Well, 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 what do we have here? Check out that little sucker. You can see the bulge in there. Clear uh, case of these things dried out. And this one here as well, completely dried out. 1,000 mic cap, 105 degrees C rated. Uh, Samwa brand, S A M. W H A. In this case, we haven't uh, got uh, caps on like we got last time. It looks like there's only bulges in two of them. The other ones look reasonably okay. And the main DC input filter capacitor here looks okay too. No bulges in that. These ones get uh, uh, less stress usually than the output caps. 450 volt rated, 105 degrees C. And once again, it is Samwa brand WL series. And the ones that have clearly failed here are also WL series. And Samwa aren't that bad a brand of capacitor. And the WL series isn't that bad 
either. So I think it's just probably either these things uh, got too hot um, and or the age of the things and they've just slowly dried out and well, you know, it eventually happens to these caps. So um, let's take, so I'm definitely gonna have to replace those two that are bulging, but what about the other ones? I think it's time for the ESR meter. We didn't look at that one last time. Now, the correct tool for the job here is not, and I repeat, not a capacitance meter. What you need is an ESR meter or an equivalent series resistance meter. These are specifically designed to measure the ESR of a capacitor because the internal resistance of these capacitors is what uh, actually determines their performance in these switch mode power supplies. It needs to be really low and when they heat up, the um, uh, dielectric material in there actually uh, dries out and the ESR increases. The capacitance might still read fine, but the ESR is the thing that goes through the roof with these bad caps. Now, what I've got here is the famous Bob Parker designed ESR meter. His name is Bob Parker, he's an Australian, and he got this originally published in Electronics Australia magazine, but this is the updated Mark II version from Silicon chip and ESR meters are all the same what they do is they pass the key to it is passing a high frequency 100 kilohertz test signal through the capacitor because if you look at data sheets for virtually all these electrolytic capacitors the ESR the equivalent series resistance is specified at a frequency of 100 kilohertz and that's exactly what this ESR meter will put out and it'll also put out a low enough voltage so that it doesn't turn on any semiconductor junctions in the circuit. So these uh, not only can measure ESR, but they can do it in circuit. I don't have to desolder these capacitors in order to measure them. And that's the brilliant thing about one of these ESR meters. If you're into repairing stuff, pretty much a must have unit. Now, uh, we've got uh, these five output uh, caps here, only two of them are showing bulges. So let's uh, switch this sucker on here and we need to zero it out. There we go, we've zeroed out our, our test leads here and it does have a table of typical figures on here but you know that's only really rough rule of thumb like what are we talking, these caps are 1000, uh, well 470 mic, uh, yeah 470 mic at 35 volts. So, you know, I'm not really going to go by that 470 mic at 35 volts, 0.1, 100 milliohms. So, 0.1 on here. Eh, it should be lower than that. Let's go check the data sheet. And sure enough, I checked the data sheets for these WL uh, series Samwa caps, and uh, the value is um, uh, 0.027 or 27 milliohms maximum. Um, at 20 degrees uh, Celsius for these particular caps, 470 microfarad, 35 volts. So let's uh, measure them here and see what we get. So let's measure a good one here. The, these two here are good ones. So let's flip this puppy over. We've zeroed our meter here and we're looking for something under that 0.027 mark. There we go, 0.01. Not a problem, 0.02, you know, it doesn't have the resolution really to go that low, but ballpark, that cap is just fine. So really, uh, there is no reason to change that unless you really want extra long life. I mean, this one, these, this one might eventually fail as well, but at the moment, to get this thing back up operational again, we don't need to change that cap. It's just fine. Now, this one next to it here, and by the way, make sure warns you on here, discharge capacitor before measuring. You don't want to blow the ass out of your ESR meter. So this is another one which is not bulging. And there we go, not, not 0.02 ohms, 20 milliohms. That one's fine. I wouldn't bother changing that one. Now, this one here, this one here is a bulgy and so is this one. I can feel it and you can see it. We're seeing the close-ups on that. So these two, well, let's measure this third one over here which isn't bulging so let's do this one and we've got 0.02 again that one is fine wouldn't bother replacing that but first bulgy one let's take a look there's the two pins there and the great thing about this is you can actually measure these 
in circuit. And because it's a low enough voltage, it's not going to switch anything else on. This uh, capacitor, these large value capacitors, will be by far the lowest impedance device in this whole circuit parallel across that voltage output rail. So really, it basically essentially ignores everything else. So let's have a look at it. Hey, there we go. 0.24, 240 milliohms, an order of magnitude higher than what is than what the spec for that capacitor is. So it's clearly failed. So even if it didn't have a bulge in it, a bulge is the usual giveaway, but it doesn't always have to have a bulge in it. So the standard practice would be to go around, and measure all the caps in a product like this and see which ones are out of spec. And here we go, the next bulgy one. But I found that most of the time they, they do bulge. When they do fail, they do bulge. And oh, look at that one, that's a shocker. 0.61 ohms. And by the way, no, the polarity doesn't matter. A rat's ass with these things. It doesn't matter at all. Um, electrolytic capacitors are polarity sensitive, but because this is such a low voltage, it doesn't matter. You're not going to harm any good capacitors by doing that. So there you go. Bingo. With these two culprits, I need to replace those. They're Gonski. There's a little one down here. Hasn't bulged. I might actually measure him as well, just for good measure, but I don't. He's not a big output. DC rail cap, so I'm not, I'm not too fussed on that. 0.14, that sounds about right for a cap of that, that size. So, yeah, good enough. Need to replace two caps there. There you go. Check out the, uh, check out the charring there underneath the um, backlight uh, transformer there. Eh. It's been getting a little bit hot, that one. And uh, here's the base of the board. Nothing special. It looks a bit, looks a bit grotty. Not, not that impressed. It's not as good as the Samsung one we, we looked at anyway. But yeah, they're kind of doing the right things on there. And for those curious, I will measure the big um, high voltage cap over here. Yes, I have checked. There's no voltage on that. It is discharged. Usually they'll have a bleed resistor across it, but always measure it before you do that. One, this is only 68 microfarads at 450 volts. So let's flip it open. Where is it there? Over, that's that one and that one, 0.8 ohms. That sounds pretty decent. I mean, if you go by the uh, chart here, it doesn't go up to 450 volts, but you know, 68. It, you know, I expect it under an ohm and that's what I'm getting. So really, I don't think that one is a drama at all. And just to clarify that, we do actually have a mix of WB series and WL series. So the two that have failed are the WL series. These 470 mics, um, uh, WB series, they're all fine. But the two that failed here, they are the WL series at 1000 mic. And the best I've got are these JCAR SI brand uh, 1000 mic 25 volt instead of uh, 1000 mic 16 volt. Once again, you can go up in voltage, no drama at all. And you can go up in capacitance, no drama at all. But uh, do not go down in voltage. That's a big no-no. And don't go up, uh, sorry, don't go down in capacitance either. You can maybe get away with going down a little bit. In general, you uh, don't really want to do that. So let's just whip these out here. All you, all you got to do is heat up one pin and pull out one side and then heat up the other one. Oh, what I got my iron set to here, not that great. So that, that pops out. And of course we can't stick our capacitor through that hole there unless we've actually got a hole. So we just whack some solder wick over that and put it down. And bingo, it wicks the solder away, and ta-da, we have a hole. And we do the same thing here. Got to have solder wick. It's absolutely essential. And that should wick that away, bingo. And we're ready to whack in our new caps. Make sure you get the polarity correct. And there's the uh, their low ESR type, of course. You must use low ESR types 
for their switch in power supplies. Crappy SI brand, I know, but it's all I've got. Uh, they are 105 degrees C rated. So let's uh, stick those in and solder them and see if we can fix this sucker. And just to prove that that fixed it, let's measure our ESR again. There we go, 0.03. Not as good as the other ones, but near enough. There we go, 0.05, good enough for Australia. That'll get us out of trouble. That'll at least get this monitor up and working. Let's give it a try. So here we go, let's give it a try. I haven't snapped the bezel back on yet. I'll just uh, hold off until we get the AOK. -okay. Ta-da, hey, we have a blue light. We have a blue light and I saw the LG thing there. Ta-da, check signal cable. And bingo, there it is, foregone conclusion. It works an absolute treat. Perfect, another win for dumpster diving. I love it. Catch you next time.